So recently I did a new Timu haul and this RGB individually addressable LED matrix I purchased from Timu. Uh, quite impressed when it arrived actually. It's uh, a little bit bendy which could be useful for some applications. Just look at some of the pins on the back. I mean you've seen the videos I've done about WLED and near pixels that you've got a data out and a data in. And these have provided these on these little connectors I'm not sure what they're called they're probably JST connectors but they might be a different company and this one's good because it's also got an extra connector for power so it's not really very healthy to drive these from the little microcontroller boards really you should send separate power down to it as well but as long as you're not having too many of these LEDs and you're not trying to light them all in white which will be all the colours all the LEDs you can normally get away with just testing and using them uh, just with a little Arduino because obviously what I've done before has been with LED rings or five or six near pixels and yet this is eight by eight I think so 64 near pixels if each of these have got three LEDs on if you turn all of them on bright that's well 64 by 3 whatever that is LEDs that all come on at once so will take a lot of power so it's how to wire these up now thankfully when I ordered these individual near pixels which I've used for in a couple of projects it came with this little wire so this is one of the connect that I can use for that so instead of cutting these off and using these wires let's connect them up this way so there's no point in me setting these up to begin with without something to drive them if I put power in them you might get a random pattern you might not so today I'm going to use a little different technique than I used before. I'm not going to use WLED and I'm using this controller, which is still an ESP32 board, but this is a Vroom32. I think this is a, a, a dev kit of some kind. It's A to Z delivery. So it's uh, I think it's Amazon's own and other of Amazon's brands. It wasn't too much. If I can find the link, I'll share that below. So I'm going to use that. Now I could use WLED to program this, but I'm going to use something else. Let's go to the computer and have a look. All right, so this time I'm going to go to this product called Night Driver LED. So this is made by a guy who used to work at Microsoft. Really interesting chap to listen to. He does some great videos, but he's got a love of LEDs as well, and he has lots of things controlling them. So there's this other project that he's uh, shared, Night Driver LED. So I'm in Chrome again. It obviously looks very similar to uh, WLED, although there's an error there. Let's not worry about that. So select your device type. It's an ESP32 and select project. I'm just going to uh, select demo at the moment. Connect. Um, so well, I'm not sure which one it is. Let's just go with the first one and see what happens. So connect. Now I think for this one, you have to hold the boot down as we're connecting. So I'm going to click on install. I'm not going to bother in, in erasing it, but if I just click next now, it's not going to do anything. So I need to hold boot down for a second and click next. Oh, then, well, you click next when you click install. You hold the boot down when you click in install and hopefully that should wake it up. There you go. So this will take two minutes. So it sends the card now. So this is different from the We Must D ones. This particular one, you have to hold boot down to make it work. So I, I couldn't get it to recognize the board without doing that. Now on this board, there won't be any Wi-Fi at the moment, even though this is a Wi-Fi thing, but this demo isn't using the Wi-Fi. So I'm just doing this really, just using this purely as a controller for this at the moment. This project involves you having other servers that talk to these boards on night driver led and so you have like a central controller that goes out and talks to your all of your lead strips connected to your esp and can use them and do other things with it so really cool project we're not going to use all of that i'm just using a different tool to program one of these boards okay installation complete so i'm just going to turn the computer off and let's come back properly to the desk so this is the the mail and we want it to go into the data in on there see so this one says data out data in so it's this one and this is all set up for us really so that's good and this is just so i can access these connectors a little bit easier i'm just using that so i've got this plugged in this should be running now i'm just going to hit reset and then it's working out how to wire it up so um, you don't need these i could do these on a breadboard but i'll just show you a little different thing that i've got so this has got some DuPont connectors on, on one side and then it's got these funny little hook things on the other side. All right, so the wire goes into this bit. I mean, it's a bit dodgy the way that they've set it up. 
Uh, this came from AliExpress, I think. But if I push, if I push this in, you get a little grabber that comes out. Can you see that? So that's a better way. Like a little pearl catcher thing, if you know what on earth those are. So that will grab onto a wire for you. So, but if I've got these wires here, I can just go in and grab and connect to one of those wires. Normally you use these for connecting to the ICs on circuit boards. That's what they used to use them for. So you can just grab one of the legs like that. But definitely not a permanent thing, but just for this experiment and to try and get this working. This is what I'm going to use today. This is going to be very similar again to the other. So we need a black and red. So let's take the black and red. That's always easiest. So let's uh, connect the black to ground. So you see we've got a ground that side there. And then we've got a 3.3 volts there. So that's just going to be the power that we're going to use. So let's put the black onto ground. Easy. And the red one we'll put onto the 3.3 volts. Now the other one we need is the signal so the default signal on night driver led is on g5 it's uh that one there g5 they go a bit weird so you see that's g5 then you've got g17 g16 g4 anyway it's just how they lay the boards out i'm going to use brown for that g5 so that should be sending out what we need to drive this so let's now try and connect this up now on this one data that's going in is green so in many ways i should have used those colors uh, power is red and ground is white so just to confuse everyone i'm going to do black to white so this is the ground that goes to the white one so here is the data went in on the green on this cable so I connect that one to the data all right and then finally let's send the power in this should be all i need so let's connect it it looks like that doesn't want to play just reset that just in case so what have i done wrong okay so black is ground ah oh, there's what the problem was um it was wired up, but black had come loose over here. So let's pop that back in. <laughs> hey, did you see that? All right. So, wow, beautiful pattern there. Let's see if I can get this pattern a little bit better for you to look at. Very bright at the moment. So, yeah, you can just about see the pattern there with the lights off. It's resolving it. So going from some deep greens all around the rainbow and uh, are popping up. So even though this is a matrix, it's working it out and it's just sending a ripple uh up that matrix just with uh just out of the box software on this this matrix is able to display some really pretty patterns in fact let me show you something so this is something i made a few years ago and you see it's uh it's all laser cut and everything and i call it a pixel box so i designed this a while ago but the matrix in this it's very similar to this matrix obviously a little bit more compact and it was with a thing called coloredino and at the time, their board was about £15 or so to get it. And it was like a matrix like this, but it's actually got a built-in Arduino as well. Um, but that's quite a lot more expensive than these. I think this was about £5, I think, to buy. Uh, so now uh, the cost of entry has come down a lot. So let me just show you what I've done with this. That should be OK. All right, so... Uh, see so i've programmed some bitmap patterns on here there's a pac-man uh character and uh oh here comes the pac-man hard to do that in eight by eight characters and then this goes through uh, various different programs of different things so see that's a pattern that's a little bit s similar to that and i've just got some plastic over this which diffuses it a little bit so it's not as harsh as this one um, but you see once you've got one of these matrix you can do all of these uh different patterns on it anyway there's some possibilities with one of these timu matrixes some of the things that you can do comment if you're interested in seeing the code to that and i might do a walk through and show you what i did with that one but very easy it would be to uh, 
uh, transfer that to an Arduino that was driving this as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. You know, some of the stuff that you buy from Timu is, let's say it's substandard. Other stuff is really good. And I think this is one of those that falls into really good. All that's left to say is bye.